this feels unbelievable and exotic but I'm driving to another state the state of Vermont for my first public performance since the pandemic started and in a couple of hours me and my colleagues at Tatanic Music Festival are going to start rehearsing Linka's incredible and beautiful Sextet for Piano and Strings. This is my drive and the day only gets better and better. The Iconic Music Festival is the creation of the power couple of amazing musicians Joanna Genova and Ariel Rudyakov, who made their hometown, Manchester in Vermont, a desirable destination for musicians, students and listeners. This summer they truly accomplished a mission impossible by arranging for their concerts to be performed before the live audiences, and I'm honored to be featured at the closing night of the festival. Every incoming musician has to get tested for COVID upon arrival, and I'm no exception. Getting ready to get tested for COVID. Hopefully I don't have it because I feel just fine, but here I am. So here I am. Not much time for anything other than this, but otherwise, very happy that I'm negative, I'm not sick, and I'm free to proceed with music making with my colleagues. This is going to be an amazing end of the week. Approaching the Riley Center for the Arts now, where our rehearsals and the performance will take place. Finally here! All of us will wear masks when rehearsing and performing. This is going to be quite a new challenge for me. It was such a productive rehearsal. I'm so happy. But now... It's time to get some rest before the evening practice. Manchester's main streets have many wonderful restaurants, cute shops and, of course, the view of the gorgeous Mount Equinox. Okay, I'm back to the hall to practice Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata that opens the concert and this particularly nasty coda of the first movement of Glinka. <laughs>
Apparently, it's already night time and the moon is up. I spent a good four hours in the hall practicing, and now I'm so ready to sleep. Tomorrow will be an intense day, and you soon will see why. Good morning. I'm off to get some breakfast, then to go rehearse, and then to go do something very, very special. wonderful wonderful sunny afternoon the weather is just phenomenal and I'm very excited because I'm on the way to perform for a nursing home right now I will be giving them a 45 minutes recital and I'm very happy that I get to do this while I'm here it makes the residents happy and it makes me happy that they are happy anyway it's a win-win situation carrying some parts of the keyboard on the way to the local nursing home and oh, look at that scenery it's incredible it is hot oh my god over 90 degrees but i will be sitting and playing outside on the keyboard set to the maximum volume so the residents can keep a good distance from me good afternoon it's nice to see you again today we have a very special treat for the wonderful pianist Asya Kurepanova, just a tremendously, wickedly talented uh, pianist and musician, multi-talented and multifaceted. So with that, I give you Asya. Thank you so much. I'm very really happy to see you all. And I would like to start my program with a wonderful piece by Chopin. Thank you. 
I'm incredibly proud of my colleagues at Taconic Music Festival. They created an incredible space for live music. They took all possible precautions, arranged for all of us performers to wear masks, to be well sanitized, they really arranged for people to be seated far from each other, practicing social distancing. There are sanitizing wipes and sanitizing liquids at the entrance of the hall and everybody's just going, going to feel very safe being at the concert. At the same time, these precautions that are actually not difficult to arrange, you just have to be very thorough. It allows musicians to feel alive again. It allows people to hear live music. It allows the special energy of live music making to be in place again. And it's, it's really amazing to witness how important the situation of the concert hall and the very special feeling that it gives when it has been taken from you and now given back. That appreciation is a big gift because it makes us value what we do even more in a completely different level. Well, our first impulse was, of course, like everybody else, some fear and extreme caution and the assumption that we would have to cancel everything. We sort of had this, but there was something about the situation and the way it was changing constantly that, that stopped us from canceling everything outright. We very sadly had to say, tell our students that they couldn't come. Um, first time in about over 35 years that we haven't taught students in the summer and so that was a real you know, that that hurt but the, as things evolved and the caseload in Vermont didn't seem to be changing all that much and some guidelines were loosening for restaurants and bookstores and museums and, and things of that nature we, we thought maybe we can do this Maybe we can do this a little bit differently. Um, and so we are doing what restaurants are doing, a 25% capacity of the hall. And when they allow 50%, then we did that. But we never did really. We just, we kept it, we kept it. No, we didn't. We, we stayed at 25%. We didn't allow more than that in the hall, just for everybody's safety and comfort, yeah. I think. Yeah. I sure. think we were met really with a lot of positivity. Everybody wanted to see us succeed and see us make this happen and we had a lot of support people asked a lot of questions how we will do this how we will do that so we did a lot of research and we have a fantastic communications and marketing person Jane Duda who helped organize all of the logistics and followed all of the guidelines from the state and everything just for the audience and for musicians was organized in a way that we felt we can do this safely and we weren't intending it was not our goal to, to set out to be pioneers <laughs> You know, this, but this, you are. <laughs> that, that, that is superfluous attention, fine, great, whatever. But we, we hope that it does encourage some others, perhaps, depending on how things go. Uh, we have now learned to be um, constantly adaptive. I think that's the one thing, the biggest takeaway for me, is that we, we just have to see what is offered in the environment, so to speak, and respond to it. And we will continue to do things if we can. I think it's who we are and how we define ourselves. And a little break is good, but then you lose your identity. <laughs> yeah, we, we did begin to feel ourselves slipping away in a sense. And, and all of the Zoom meetings and everything else, the technology is grand, it's wonderful you know, to connect, but it's not human. It's not everything. It's not human yeah. enough. And yeah. so we, we, had, we felt that we had to do something. Thank you and so much. And we had the opportunity to do it. Thank you so and much lucky. for what 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Asya. Thank you.